John and I at Celebrate Act Two aren't just two really knowledgeable guys bringing you all sorts of important information, uh, except maybe this is another piece of important oh, information. No. Yeah, you're right, Art. We, we'd be smart. We'd be real smart. We got no, 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 listen, here's the deal. No, no, you'd be the smart one. Everybody, everybody knows that we are big fans of J.A. Jantz, mystery writer. Um, how many books has she done? 70 Seven, or more? 70 or so. And in fact, uh, just a big shout out to uh, my partner who turned me on to uh, J.A. Jantz. And I hadn't read a fiction book in probably 40 or 50 years since Rosemary's Baby or The Exorcist <laughs> or one of those things on the way to a training camp in, in the military. Uh, and, and since then, I've read all 70 of them. And we've interviewed her a half a dozen times. And she's one of my favorite people. Yeah. Yeah. She, and she's a lot of fun to talk to. But equally as important as the idea of reading. Mm -hmm. What do you You hit 55, 65, particularly after you retire, quote, retire, officially retire. You start looking for things to do. Now, maybe it may might be starting a new business. Could be anything. Um, but you got a lot of free time that you didn't have. And the, I think the most important thing you can do is to read, pick up mm. a good book, go to the library, for God's sakes. It's a, a fun place to go to, but mostly read. It's very enlightening. It's good for the brain. Um, if you like mystery novels like J.A. Jantz, that's great. I started a new one. I'm going to turn art mm. onto it. Lisa Scottolini. Um, she does a whole bunch of, I also started reading some romance novels. Romance. Nicholas Sparks. Yeah. You I mean, you're, I you're, you're right. reading, wait, is that Hallmark in print? Is that oh. Oh. <laughs> I, I read Nicholas Sparks. You watch the Hallmark channel. Right. It's kind of the same thing. But I recommend turn off the TV. After all, everything repeats on television every hour if it's the news. Uh, and you've seen all the sitcoms anyway, right? Pick up a book, read a book. It's it's good for your brain. So, and art, you you like um, I, nonfiction. I'm pretty much a nonfiction kind of guy, and I've always been a prolific reader of of books and articles on nonfiction uh, until I got turned on to Jantz, uh, a, a wonderful, wonderful series. We can't recommend them enough. Uh, but uh, I, my my latest piece is uh, called "On the Wars." Dilemma. Uh, okay. By that sounds like a vegan book to me. Well, it really isn't. It, it's a, um, uh, a story of how corn became the center of the universe of our food chain. Uh, and I mean, Very I'm talking about corn, corn fed beef. Well, beef yeah. don't eat corn naturally. And there's a lot of things that have to be done to make it valuable. But one of the things about corn, and it was sort of like when the uh, uh, the Incas and the uh, uh, Mayas, Mayans were uh, taken over by Europeans, and they had something called maize, which is, is corn, uh, sure. a different variety. And they had already come up with several different varieties because it's extremely weather tolerant, both uh, in, uh, rain right. as well as uh, heat and cold, right. and it, it grows all over the United States as well. Uh, but there, uh, the reasons why it became so prolific and supported by the government and becomes part of virtually everything that we eat, if you're not a plant-based uh, uh, human being, yeah. is that uh, it's been encouraged for a variety of reasons. And this book talks about that. Uh, Michael Pollan has three or four other books. I, I'm reading one of them now, and I've got uh, another two that are going to be waiting for me. But I also um, uh, was turned on to uh, a book, uh, the Ar it's not called The Arsenal of Democracy. I'll talk about that some other day. But it's a book that uh, I read, which talked about how we went from zero to becoming the world's supplier of, uh, of uh, munitions and military and, and ships. Victory ships used to come off the, the line. We didn't, had never made them before. And in World War II, all of a sudden they were coming off like a couple right. of weeks, okay, from zero. Right. And it's about the Liberty fascinating- ships. I remember that, yeah. yeah the, 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 the people who were put in charge of this, uh, uh, Kaiser is one of them, and I forget yep. who, who the, the other one was. Uh, 
uh, Henry, and, Henry Ford and, was a big part of it. Uh, yeah, but but they were two. Uh, uh, Kaiser was actually hired by somebody else who became a general. But in any event, uh, he was a, yeah. the, who was the head of General Motors back in the day, Sloan or somebody like that. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. in any event, uh, it, this the same story, by the way, just as an aside, pertains to the Jeep, mm -hmm. the famous Jeep. Yeah. Um, they by the way, it was, it was a Kaiser Jeep and it was made by the same people who have the hospital chain these days. It was because, the Willys Jeep. It was the Willys Jeep, but yeah. Kaiser Steel right. turned all the factories into uh, right. into uh, automobile. Anyway, sounds like a fascinating book. Sounds like a, a little bit of history, a little bit of nutrition. Interesting. Yeah. So in any so event, whatever, whatever whether, whether like. it's fiction or nonfiction that turns right. you on, okay, there's something for everybody. And uh, this is really a great book. And I uh, can't wait to get the, the mystery novels that John has turned on to because he and his wife, I know, read them all the time. And... Uh, my wife, who's a prolific reader, knows all the stuff that uh, John and Penny uh, uh, read as well. So uh, find yourself a good book. Amen. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.